Welcome back, everybody, to a to a head to head. This is a mono a mono competition. Not no. Uh, what happened is my buddy saw the fox belly that I was putting into the gate rubber. And he went on the Artful Dodgers website and he saw the ground fox and he was like, it's gorgeous. So he bought a Tentu Builders Kit. I'm sorry, an Element Builders Kit 2. And we put it all together with the ground fox. And it's a beautiful thing. He opted for servo and axle. It's got all the little factory team bits in it. It's got the stealth transmission flipper. I uh, had to build the body mounts to fit a Vanquish Origin shell. Everything, I think, came out great. So as this was months in the making, uh, I did what uh, a, a form of reverse engineering where, like, imagine you were trying to build the same thing just going off of a blurry photograph. This, of course, being Jake the Snake, who there are some similarities. Let's, let's line them up this way. Like, shock mounting positions, etc., very similar. Because what I effectively did was I took the, the layout, like, you know, this, like, link mounting holes and stuff are in the same place. There are a lot less holes on here because I was working with different shocks. I'm working with chassis mounted steering versus servo and axle. Uh, I'm working with a three gear with dig versus a stealth. So this is a, like, like they're cousins-ish. They're very similar. I have never driven them together. And as they are very similar, I mean, Jake is a bit wider, but there's different tires, there's different foams, there's different shocks, there's different speed controls, there's a lot of different stuff, but at their essence, these are mostly the same thing. Uh, I haven't done the full scalings to see where the CGs and stuff come out. Uh, Jay, I can say Jake is three quarters of an inch wider. He is, the, I want to say he's a little bit heavier. No, they have to be, as they sit now, because the last time I sort of did any scaling, this guy didn't have any of his body mount stuff in place. They, they, are, they are more similar than they are dissimilar. So I'm not going to do anything like a full-blown six gate. What I'm going to do is we're going to do some some little lines. I've got some sections in mind, like I think what, what uh, okay, let's do it indoors. That way I don't go out of hand outdoors. Daphne's line, Daphne's other line on over on Undertaker. We will do a section on the newest obstacle, which I'm calling the notch, uh, just for funsies. And I hope, like, I'm not going to hit the ramp because I don't want to ruin this body. Uh, we will do the side hill at Undertaker, the big side hill. And what are we going to round that out with? Uh, climbing up to the stutter at the new obstacle. I think I'm going to dig into the Upbeats discography and pick something out to name that whole complex that includes the notch and the stutter and the ramp and all that. So uh, there's a little cut section that you may or may not have seen Zoidberg run. We will do that one. So Daphne's line, Daphne's other line, the big steep side hill, the notch, and then we'll do that section up by the ramp. And that should be enough. I should be able to get a feel for the boat. Uh, these are cut, siped canyon trails on Tim Tins. These are dual stages cobbled together from whatever I had on some hunks. I still stand by the idea that I don't think hunks are quite the perfect tire for this. And then every time I say that, I take this out and wheel it. And I'm like, holy crap. So we will find out. Also, brushless, brushed, both running 3S. 
Speed wise and everything, they're very similar. Uh, this guy's noisy. This thing is quiet as a church mouse. Enough of the talking. Let's see how the, and Jake has been doing some mud work. Just adds to the patina. Let's see how these guys do head to head on the course. All right, all right, we commence with Ground Fox versus Ground Foe, Daphne's line. We'll send Jake out first, as Jake has been in these waters before. So Jake is a little trickier to uh, modulate, I will say. The old speed control, I think, is a little high. Okay, he's really high. And dig his way over, I think. I wouldn't say it was the prettiest I've ever seen, but it was pretty good. We'll get him, uh, that dump truck is in a really unfortunate position. We'll just park Jake here, kind of, I'll reframe that. So he's kind of hanging out over there, and now we will see how does it compare to the real thing? This is Dr. Pepper versus Dr. Thunder. God, this thing's, this thing's really good. Like, really good. And there's, there's absolutely no tuning in that Ground Fox at all. Like, it's been finished for a couple days, and it's been wheeled twice. Some may remember that during the ghost ride of the Ground Fox Origin, it cleared Daphne's other line first try, no repositioning. Now I feel like, I feel like, whoa, what is that? No. I apologize. A stingy thing had uh, landed upon my lower extremities. All right, you know what? Stingy thing. We're going to, we're going to, we're going to allow Jake a mulligan on that one. Oh, I don't need to be stung. I'll try to do a similar approach with both. See the hunks right here? I don't know if they need to warm up or... They just... They... The hunks are letting me down today. Okay. Oh, look at that rear tire. Doing some work. But I think it's pump rear pumpkin. Dig, dig to push it back a little. And now he's just got the skid hung. And as far as I'm concerned, he's already failed because he went so wide. Like it's just, you can just watch it pushing the front end out of the frame. I mean, once he gets over here, that's, but you know what? Nothing that happened right there counted. I'm, I'm really wondering about, I think Jake needs a, uh, a Daphne-esque tire test. Because the hunks were kind of defaulted to him. Alright, okay. Push 
pushed a, pushed a little wide there. A dig would have come in really handy right there. Okay, well, just look how much more easily he fires into that notch there. Will he be able to pull a rear tire up? Give me a little down there. All right. Can he can he get over without pushing it all the way? Nope. I would say Daphne's line bested them. Daphne's other line bested them both, but at the same time, it it genuinely felt like the Canyon Trails had an easier time of it. I failed, but failed more easily. All right, welcome to the notch. This area is the notch. Aside from this little point here, it's about it's about nine inches of just straight vertical. And then you'll see right here, you have to breach just straight up about five inches. If you have any bumper of any kind, you have to sort of pick a spot. And then it's usually a bump up to even get into the notch. Let's see if the hunks can redeem themselves a little bit. Generally got to take some angles here. get that trying to get the side of that passenger front to bite over and the hunk not a tire overflowing with side bite okay so now I'm trying to angle the passenger there it is just gotta find those little bits of traction rear end still fighting it. oh drop back in he had it right there get over that it's really hanging on the skid just had to get a little over to the side of it once he's clear he's pretty good Jake's pretty low for this terrain scrape there and we'll just We'll just leave his, uh, took us, well, let's notch him into a rock here. There we go. Jake is effectively parked. Now, this guy's approach, breakover and departure are quite good. Are they good enough? Yes. Does he need to bump up? No. How's he gonna pull through here? Oh. Yeah. Okay, so here is a section where Jake's layout is better. Okay, all right, I've got that side of that canyon trail over. More side bite in this tire. I think that little bit of high weight of the body. I'm trying to take it real slow. A lot of lug pop there. I think it's, I think the driver rear is betraying him. Okay, let's try this side. We'll try, I mean, there's no saying he's got to, it's just about defeating the obstacle. It's not necessarily about running the same line Jake did. That's bellied up. Okay. Oh, he had it. He had it. Nice. That's his first, that was his first flip. Rolled out quite nicely. And now I can't remember how I got up. I, I'm constantly, uh, it's refreshingly amazing how much steering angle there is in just a completely stock element axle. All right, I'm gonna try running him really far right here. I think too far. It's very composed. 
dig right there would have saved that. I'm trying not to wreck this body too much. He resets attitude really well. Is that going to be the line right there? Canyon Trail a little bit not as good here. I think I think setup can be discounted and I think that came down to in this particular section one tire was better than the other. I think I think the rigs performed to the best of their abilities. All right, what we're going to do here is come up try to stay along the slope across his face. And then the goal is to come across the top, optimally over the top of that. If you have to use any bit of that rock, it means you've slid too far because right below the little dirt cube here, it goes to, it has to be close to 70 degrees. And really, anything in a side hill past about 45 degrees, it gets tough. Turning down on a side hill is never great. Okay, so he's gonna try to poke up towards the cube there. This is generally where to get light, because that top tire is, this is kind of Jake's thing. Yeah, I think he could have pulled even higher up over that tire and not uh, uh, that tire up over that and and not had a problem. We want to we stay in frame, you know, for the continuities. Eh, that's pretty good. Okay. That way, if uh, if uh, the ground fox rolls over, he will land on the ground foe. Same sort of approach. Again, this is a, this is a terrain, oh, oh. Lens a little, the, the, like we are in the, we are in the wheelhouse of the hunk right here, I, I think. I'm trying to get that passenger rear out of that hole. Hey, I, I said it and then it became a reality. We'll try a little wider because what's happening is the Canyon Trail isn't super great at getting through that kind of a transition where that's just smooth edge. I thought about taking some material and filling that in. So we'll try to stay more up on the slab here. You see the canyon trail just, and then right here, it's as soon as it falls into that notch. Okay, so try to poke it more this way. A little swing there, a little swing. I mean, you can you can see how high that front tire is, and I don't think this is set up, or even the body. I think it's just the canyon trail doesn't want to do this. There's no way. He comes out of that. Wow. Okay, that was some that was some anti squat right there. You could see the front end push down, even though it should be getting much lighter. That's crazy. It was so slow. So slow on the rollout. All right try to give him more of a chance. Nope. I mean, the origin is not that heavy, but in here, it's acting pretty heavy. You get one more, you get one more dig to try to get over the top. Slow, slow. Real good, that front end. Oh, spoke too soon. But, I mean, uh, that one goes to Jake, but 
I think it's wheel time more than anything. Wheel time and a little bit on a tire. So now after having attacked one, two, three, four, four of the five proposed obstacles, I will say that my quickness to attack the hunk for failing me, uh, I think it's set up. I think, I think I need more tinker with the link positions. I think more above all things, I need more wheel time, but you know how it works around here. I, if I, if I'm wheeling one rig, it might be 10 minutes before I'm wheeling a different one. Like there is not, there are not huge amounts of time put in between one and the other. Uh, within the next three minutes, I'll have set this controller down, picked up a different one and I'm driving something else. And while, as I said, when they were on the bench, they are very similar vehicles. They drive wildly differently. Look at Jake there. If I could have reached the dig quick enough, but reverse is quicker. Can he, I mean, this will be proof positive. If he cleans over this, it's not the hunks. And you know what it's not? It's not the hunks. It's the, uh, as has been said, the nut behind the wheel. All right, can we get Jake around? Nice. It's a pretty smooth descent down the invisible side on the other side of the ramp. I, I still refuse to take this guy up the ramp or up the stutter because I don't. He has no adjustment. Look how the, the drive on this guy, the absolute drive. I was trying to nudge him. I was trying to nudge him back towards the cut that Jake took. He's so good on canyon trails that I, I hazard to try him on something else. I think I, I think I hit it with too much wheel speed before. I definitely did. Look at that go. Look at that go. So I think this worked out perfectly. This particular non-competition, I don't think this could have done, could have worked out any better. Uh, Daphne's line, Daphne's other line. Okay, Daphne's line, I edge directly to Ground Fox. He takes that one. Uh, Daphne's other line was a wash. The notch I give to Jake. The side hill portion I give to Jake. This one, I would honestly say slightly to this guy again. Very close, but a slight edge to the fox over the foe. And at, at the end of the day, I call it a virtual tie, which is a, which is an, if anything, is a testament to the real thing, to the ground fox. Look at the height differential there. Look at the ground clearance differential there. Uh, Jake is low. You know what, Jake's, Jake's gonna hit the ramp anyway. Just to see uh, hunks, hunks up the ramp. If I can line it up. This is, I'm getting a lot of uh, brain parallax here. Nice and slow, nice and slow. Yeah, there's, there's, a, there's a notch there, a nearly invisible notch by the back tire. It, it, it's kind of where everybody stops at. It's at about the 57 degree mark. A little roll back there. Good catch, good catch, Jake. So I don't, I don't regret the existence of either of these gentlemen. Uh, I'm sure that the real, the genuine Grand Fox with some sort of competition type body, you know. This guy has most of his bodies under, most of the tire under the body. 
And if you'll notice, there's like, there's nearly no rubbing. Even when he, like, on these like side, sidling transitions like this, there's a little bit, but the rear tires tuck up so nicely That's just that rear rubbing because it's so tucked up in that rear. Look, at, look how nice that tire fits in there. I think he looks so good. The complaint list about the Artful Dodgers Ground Fox and the egregiously expensive Vanquish Origin body set. Now, let's temper that slightly by, I mean... Has anyone looked up what a body costs nowadays? Like 170 bucks is not uncommon. That's insane. Jake is fitted with a used ecto body. This thing is really, really good. And Jake is a is a different good. As I mentioned, quite a bit had to get changed because he was effectively built to hold that body to get that ecto shell on there. And for and chassis mounted versus servo and axle, they are different enough, but they are the same enough. And when they attack this little line here, they do it differently. But they both I think they, they I think they attack it equally well. So did we prove anything today? I have no idea. I guess if you have the machines and a little bit of the know-how to borrow some, look at that, go. I mean, you can't argue that that's not good. If you have the technique and the machines and the materials to sort of borrow inspiration from the ground fox, you can make something, you know, perhaps, on par with the ground fox. I think it's probably just easier to uh, get on the Artful Dodgers website and buy a ground fox. It's remarkably good. And everything about Jake is effectively built from scratch. So at the end of this, I'm pretty happy with how Jake turned out. I'm inordinately happy with how, what I've in my head just been calling the GFO the ground fox origin this thing came out amazing i think it looks fantastic i think the purple and the pebble work great the pebble definitely looks more gray out here in the sunlight but his purple looks more purple so i, I you know if anything this would have been an opportunity to listen to one madman ramble and look at some pretty sweet rigs so thanks for stopping in and dropping by everybody. Thanks for dropping by the canyon. You know what I do wish though? <laughs> There's that face again. I wish, uh, you know, if anybody actually wanted to physically drop by the canyon, that would be great because I feel like a lunatic a little more every day. Oh, by the way, here's a little, here's a little something. Uh-oh. It's another one. There's, there's another obstacle forming. They just spring out of the ground. Thanks again dropping by everybody please be sure to comment below and uh please do be sure as well to tune in for whatever nonsense turns up next i don't know give me some ideas uh if anybody's got an idea like a, a tire or two to throw on jake i've got a lot uh i could throw a different set of tires or two on there to see if it makes any difference the hunks they the hunks are to me in my head now acting like the holds, J Concepts the holds, where in some situations they are so good, and then in other situations they just don't do well, which is why rapidly, and I'm non sequiturring here in the outro, that the damn Cutside Canyon Trails are rapidly becoming one of my favorite tires because they are not the best tire. I would say they are not the best tire for anything, but they're a really good tire at pretty much everything. The GFO was super consistent across the board. 
Jake does really good at LCG stuff, side hilling. He's super low uh, at like those pure vertical bits right there. He does great on that. But that thing with the bigger body and everything, it claws its way through. I think they look pretty good. We're going to try a couple more tires on the GFO, un unquestionably. But that, that will come later. This will be enough for now. It's uh, unfortunately, it's getting a little warm. I had to move under the best thing ever, the uh, umbrella in a bucket full of concrete because shade out here is like, ladies and gentlemen, we, we sit in the lap of luxury. And from this lap of luxury upon the bucket chair, we bid you adieu from Crawler Canyon. And we look forward to whatever adventures come next. And we do sincerely hope that you come along with us. So have a good one, everybody.